Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar with Fred. Uh, we're really excited to have everyone here. It's always great uh, getting to know everybody uh, as we check in. Uh, we're just going to wait around for a few more minutes uh, to let a few other people join in. Uh, we had a handful of uh, people registering for this event, and we just want to make sure everyone can see the whole thing. So uh, before we get started, I just want to turn things over to Sue Miller, who has an announcement about some upcoming programs and ongoing programs at the MYGNB. Thanks, Noah. Um, I'm Sue Miller. I'm the director of programs for the NYGNB, and I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that we have the second offering for the New York Family History School that's coming up. That starts on March 1st, and it's about New York land records. So there are nine sessions. Um, a couple of them are new. Some of them are things you may have not had access to before, but are excellent programs. Um, and I would highly recommend watching two of them first, Leveling the Land in New York by Kyle Hurst and Using Land Records to Solve Genealogical Problems by Aaron Goodwin. And I'm going to throw the link in the chat. This is open from March 1st through April 18th. So those are your dates, and I hope you will participate in the next offering of the New York Family History School. So I'll throw that in the chat, and I have another program I have to go to in a little bit. So I'm gonna be signing off and leave you in the very capable hands of Noah and Fred. All right, thank you so much, Sue. And yeah, as, as she said, there will be a link in the chat, and you can always find all of our events on our website. Uh, we have them all listed. There's uh, special locations for programs like the Family History School. So please check it out and, and really get acquainted with it. Uh, so now uh, on to tonight's uh, webinar. Uh, I'll hand it over to Fred just to say hello and, and introduce himself. All right. Thanks, Noah. And thanks, Sue. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me just share my screen here. We can get this started. All right. Um, so yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name uh, is is Frederick Wartz. I'm the director of digital services here at the NYGNB, uh, and today I am going to talk about uh, one of the primary focuses of my day to day work here: uh, the NYGNB's ever expanding number of online genealogy records. Uh, so right now, the NYGNB has nearly 100 collections containing about 2.5 million records on our website. Uh, many of them. You you cannot find anywhere else online, uh, and really all of them are crucial resources for New York family history research, uh, and we're really proud to have preserved them and uh, to bring you access to them. Uh, so today we're going to explore some of our most popular and essential collections uh, and how to make the best use of them. I uh, will then do a live demo of, you know, searching for records on our website so you can see how everything works. Uh, and then, of course, at the end, I will take any questions uh, you might have on anything I covered or any additional questions about our records or our website or, or really anything. Um, so, but uh, before we get into all that, uh, I would like to just give a little bit of background on our organization and exactly how our online records kind of fit in with a core aspect of the NYGNB's mission. So the preservation of historical records has really been a, a core part of the NYGNB's mission since we were founded um, over 150 years ago. Uh, for us, preservation has really always gone hand in hand with access as well. So while we always do strive to preserve historical records, uh, we also strive to make them as accessible to researchers as possible. Uh, and what we're looking at here in this slide is uh, probably the earliest set of records that was ever preserved by the NYGNB. Uh, these are New York marriage licenses uh, from the province of New York, and they were published in volume one, issue one of our quarterly journal, uh, which is named the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record. Uh, the record has come out four times a year since 1870, uh, and it's probably the most consistent medium that the NYGNB has used uh, to preserve records and share the information with researchers worldwide. Um, and, you know, the other thing again, going hand in hand with uh, preservation is access. And we always use, you know, the NYGNB is always striven to um, 
use the most contemporary technology to preserve uh, and allow access to our New York records. Uh, and so, you know, this image here might kind of look like Stone Age technology to us now, uh, but when it was originally produced back in 1870, uh, this was a huge breakthrough for New York researchers. Um, this information was transcribed by someone uh, and then typeset and then printed, uh, you know, in potentially large quantities and could be mailed essentially anywhere in the world. Uh, so all of a sudden, if you were researching a New York family or New York ancestors, you didn't have to actually go to the location where these records were. Um, and, you know, as you can see that the introduction to this, you know, in this short snippet says these are probably the first time these uh, records ever appeared in print before. And so, uh, you know, as it became easier to produce larger bound books, you know, issues of the record are, you know, between only 40 and 80 pages. Uh, you know, the NYGNB expanded our efforts uh, to include transcriptions of more substantial record sets, hit hitting as many as, you know, probably 500 or 600 pages at a time. Uh, and we began doing this in 1890, uh, and we've continued, you know, through the 20th century into the 21st century. Uh, and we, you know, continue to produce this kind of material uh, to this present day. Uh, these are just, this is a, a very small selection of, of the different titles we've produced. Um, and as you can see on the, the far right here, this one is from relatively recently uh, in 2018. So then, you know, as digital cameras became more and more available and, and used for preserving historical documents, uh, the NYGNB began to capture digital images of original records, you know, and, and not, you know, moved on from just producing transcriptions. Uh, so in 2003, that was probably the first major project uh, that we did like this. Volunteers used NYGNB equipment uh, to make the first ever digital copies of uh, records from Ward 17, which is a neighborhood on the Lower East Side of, of uh, Manhattan and New York City. Uh, and this is from the New York State uh, 1855 census. Uh, and so you can see here on the left uh, is our now somewhat dated piece of equipment we used to do this. Uh, and then on the right is uh, an, an example of one of the images which you can find uh, indexed and searchable on our website uh, today. And so, um, you know, my point and kind of reviewing this really quickly is that at now, you know, much of this material that we produced over the last century and a half, uh, we have digitized if it was not already digitized and made available on our website. Uh, so all of this can be accessed. Uh, you can, our, our full address is www.newyorkfamilyhistory.org. Uh, you can also type in just simply nygbs.org. Uh, you can find our online records uh, from our homepage, our main menu, um, you know, or you can visit this exact URL uh, to get there. Um, and as I mentioned, we have we're now we have 93 collections, almost 100, uh, totaling about 2.5 million records, um, probably a little bit more. Uh, and you know, of course, 93 collections is is a lot. Um, you know, we definitely won't be uh, looking at all of those today. Uh, you know, so one thing I do want to emphasize is that you know we re you really should explore our site and our online records. You know, on your own. Um, you know, we of course all have very different families and very different research goals. You know, so take a look through our collections catalog uh, with your own research in mind and uh, learn about the collections that are going to be most interesting to you. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to discuss ones today that will apply very broadly, uh, you know, to everybody or nearly everybody. Um, but you should just know that, that we do have some very specific kind of rare record sets uh, that may be super useful uh, to your specific research. Um, and then uh, finally, just, you know, want to remind everyone that uh, anyone can search uh, and view our search results. Uh, you don't have to have an account or sign in. Um, you can just head over to our site and search and see what we have. Uh, though, of course, NYG and B members um, have access to all the images of the original records, um, including the ability to, you know, to print and download and, and view full issues and, and all that stuff. So, um, Let's get started. Let, you know, I'm going to review a number of collections before heading over to the site. Um, and of course, you know, I think the first one I need to start with, I've already briefly introduced uh, the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record, uh, commonly referred to as the record, uh, which you're, you'll hear me use for the rest of this presentation. Um, and so uh, for those of you who don't know, the record is a scholarly journal uh, dedicated to genealogical research of people from all over New York State. 
Uh, it has been published four times a year uh, for over 152 years. So at this point, our online archive has hundreds of issues, you know, thousands of articles, millions of names, uh, and it's they're they're all chock full of really top tier information, just waiting to be discovered to be discovered by New York researchers. Um, and in recent decades as well, uh, articles published have gone through a very rigorous peer review process, uh, which basically means each article is reviewed, of course by the editor of the journal, um, as well as a panel of subject matter experts. Uh, and by doing this, we ensure you know, that the scholarship and the information in the article is of the highest quality. So this is an extremely reliable source for the most part. And I, I just want to run through some examples, um, you know, of what you might find in the record. Uh, you know, I it, it definitely the idea of a scholarly journal dedicated to genealogy, um, you know, is is not necessarily the most straightforward thing. So I, I think it's best to show, you know, what you might find in there, uh, so you can really understand the power of this resource. Um, you know, uh, the first thing, you know, I I think we need to talk about are records themselves. You know, in this case, record transcriptions. Um, the record has a lot of transcriptions of genealogical records published in uh, its issues from the start all the way up until the present day. Um, transcriptions that are submitted to the record are actually often aimed to help genealogists solve, you know, sort of well-known uh, and wide-reaching challenges related to New York State research. Um, and here, I think, is a really good example of that. Uh, something, you know, you'll find a lot of in the record are vital record substitutes. Um, as, you know, many of us know, with family in New York State, uh, birth, marriage, and death certificates can be very challenging to find. Um, and, you know, if you know your history, uh, you know, you know that this has been a problem for genealogical researchers uh, you know, that they faced even before 1870, um, you know, but certainly the record has been aware of this challenge and has been, you know, supplying transcriptions to kind of help people overcome this challenge uh, for 152 years at this point. Um, and so this specific example we're looking at highlights um, a set of newspaper announcements uh, of marriages and deaths from Essex and Washington County, uh, which are up in northeastern New York. Um, and you'll notice the time period here, 1835 to 1850, um, you know, is, is sort of a deliberately crucial time period because, you know, many areas of New York uh, at this point did not even really begin producing any official birth, marriage, or death certificates until 1880 or so. Um, of course, it, it differs greatly throughout the state, but in, in many places, you know, this period, 1835 to 1850, um, and certainly earlier than that as well, um, you know, it could be really challenging to find those certificates. Uh, so we're lucky to have, um, you know, a, a substitute, uh, you know, that, that looks like this. Um, and, you know, looking a little bit closer at exactly what, you know, these, uh, transcriptions look like, um, you know, we can see it, it's more than just names and dates. Um, you know, we have a little bit of extra information in some places. Uh, and then, of course, you can always find references to the actual newspaper uh, that this record came from, which allows you to track down uh, the full announcement. And um, just, you know, one more Vital Records article. Uh, we won't look at these all evening, but uh, this is one from uh, very early in New York's history. Um, and yeah, believe it or not, some, you know, sort of Vital Records do exist for this time period, uh, though there really aren't that many, um, you know, and, and they're pretty much just town records from the early 1700s. Uh, and, you know, they're great to have for many reasons, uh, you know, but it's certainly nice to have them extracted here in the record in very easy to read typeface, um, you know, that is well organized uh, and, you know, much less sort of messy than the original handwritten records. And, um, you know, this, I, I think, is another really good example of extracted information um, that you would find. These are uh, extracted genealogical record or information from uh, deed records that belong to some of New York's earliest Jewish families. Uh, and I chose this example because I think it really highlights how the transcriptions you find in the record often really rely on the expertise of the author. Um, you know, as you can see, if, if you read this introduction closely, um, you know, you see this information has been extracted from 
deed, deed books by a really experienced discerning genealogist. Um, you know, so it's it's a little bit more than just the transcription, uh, which is of course really useful. Um, you know, but you'll find in in many articles and and lists of records like this one, you know, even more work is sort of done for you by the author. Um, you know, in this case where you're having someone, you know, potentially painstakingly pour over, you know, hard to read or interpret documents and and sort of pull out the good information uh, and and printed in this issue. And so as I mentioned, these continue up into the present day. You know, we're, we're still producing these fairly regularly. This is um, just an example of, of one from 2020. Uh, and again, they, they are very wide ranging in subject and time period. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's really worth uh, searching even just by names in your family tree uh, to see what, what may wind up uh, surfacing. And, uh, you know, continuing to talk about the record, there, there's really a lot more than just transcribed records and extracted information, uh, you know, in the issues. Uh, you're also going to find many case studies, many compiled genealogies, uh, and even, you know, complete biographies that are written in more of a narrative form. And uh, these are really, really useful too, um, even if they don't contain the names of your ancestors. Uh, you know, of course, if, if you can find an article uh, that is written about, you know, or ties into one of your lines, then you have really hit the jackpot and that is an amazing discovery. Um, you know, but even if you don't have any ancestors, you know, literally in the record, uh, you're still gonna miss out if, if you ignore this material. Uh, and we'll take a look at some examples to kind of illustrate what I mean there. Um, you know, this first one here uh, is an article exploring an African American in the Mid Hudson Valley. Uh, you know, and, and so you may not be related to Nellie Jane, but you may be researching a family, uh, you know, a similar family in that time or in that place. Uh, and, you know, if you are, uh, you really need to read this article. Um, you're going to be able to follow along to see what sources the author used, uh, you know, what methodology they employed, how they navigated the challenges, you know, that, that this particular area and time period uh, kind of threw at them. Uh, and so you can use this as inspiration or a jumping off point for your own research. Uh, and it may wind up helping you make a major discovery, um, even if it's not talking about your uh, family per se. And, you know, here's just another example, um, you know, this article from B. Ann Morehouse, uh, of course, would be useful to many people, um, you know, the, the many people who are looking for Irish born immigrants uh, in New York City. Uh, so just a, one other example of that. Um, and, uh, you know, finally, in, in a similar vein, you'll often find articles that are written because they tackle a particularly challenging situation, uh, or even a particularly common challenge. Um, you know, and, and here we're looking at a, a case where someone was trying to determine if an individual found in multiple records is the same person or two different people. Um, you know, certainly many of us have, have been there in this exact situation. Um, you know, even if we weren't looking at someone in the exact time and place that this article is discussing, you know, the challenge is very similar. Um, so if you're interested, um, you know, in, in seeing how this author approaches that challenge, you know, sort of uh, logically or methodologically, uh, this can really help you come up with ideas how to, how to face similar, um, similar uh, types of problems in, in your own work. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in learning more about this, um, you know, I highly recommend reading a recent article that we published on our website. Uh, there is a link to it in your handout. Um, you can also find it, uh, uh, you know, on our blog. Uh, it's called um, Become a Better Researcher, Five Reasons to Regularly Read the NYGNB Record. Uh, and this goes into more detail on, on this subject. Uh, and it shows you how to read, how reading and studying the record uh, can really help you increase your skill as a genealogist. Um, so I definitely uh, recommend everyone give that, um, you know, a quick read uh, to learn more about this. And so, um, you know, that that's really a very brief introduction as far as the record is concerned. You know, it, it, it's really the tip of the iceberg as far as material that's in there. Um, you know, and I, I really would say if you're going to do only one thing after watching this webinar, um, I, you know, head over and explore the record on our website. Um, there are now, you know, many, many ways to do that, uh, to search and browse all of the, you know, fantastic material in there. Um, you know, and, and I really, I am very confident in saying, you know, at this point in our history, um, you know, the record has never been more accessible uh, and, and more available. You know, we have a full name index. Uh, you can also search the 
full text of every volume and every issue, you know, that'll help you find things like keywords or place names. Uh, you can also search and filter articles by the title of the article uh, or by the, the prominent locations in the article. Uh, and then, of course, you can easily find any issue, you know, by volume or year uh, as well. Um, and, you know, I, I, I won't you know, we'll move on to talk about some other records, um, you know, but but I really do recommend everyone learn, you know, more about using the record. Uh, if you take a look at your handout, we I have another art article linked um, that uh, is on our website and it goes into great detail about, you know, everything listed here, uh, you know, where to access the various indexes, you know, how to take advantage of them, sort of what each you know, is intended for. Uh, and that's a really good, um, you know, there's also a video uh, there. I, I did a longer presentation on this subject. Uh, so there's a video on that article if, if you'd rather watch something as well. Um, you know, but especially if you're very new to the record or haven't really heard too much about it, um, this is a really good uh, jumping off point. Uh, and again, that's, that's going to be linked in your handout. Um, so uh, now uh, let's talk about another set of records you can find on our site. Um, and, you know, this isn't, you know, when I, this isn't necessarily one specific collection. Um, you know, it's a broader, larger collection that we've split. Uh, you know, into smaller collections by county, uh, but they are all the same type of record, uh, and they're very important for New York researchers, uh, religious records. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we know, you know, vital records, birth, marriage, and death certificates can be really challenging to find in New York State. Uh, so religious records, you know, uh, baptisms, marriages, and burials uh, are some of the most, you know, immediately sought after replacements uh, for those missing uh, vital certificates. Um, so they're uh, you know useful for any research anywhere, but especially for New York researchers. Uh, and we have at this point we have um, uh, just over 120 congregations uh, records from 120 congregations all over uh, New York State on our website. Um, most of them were uh, transcriptions that were created by the NYGNB uh, by the NYGNB staff in the early 1900s, uh, and they were initially brown, bound and printed for use in in public or private libraries. Uh, uh, but now, of course, we've digitized them, put them online, uh, and they're fully searchable and, and everything like that. Um, and so, you know, you, you will find, as I said, baptisms, marriages, and burials, um, you know, but you'll really find more than just those types of records. Uh, and, and I want to emphasize and talk about that a little bit. Um, because, you know, of, of course, the names and the dates uh, are, are really crucial, and they're a major reason we, we love these records. Um, but these ones from the NYGNB, I think, are, are a little extra special um, because of the additional material that you'll find uh, as long as you know to look for it. Um, you know, and, and so it's, you know, the entire church volume uh, was transcribed, you know, exactly as it was written and exactly as it appeared. But the NYGNB staff also did some really amazing and crucial footwork and contextual work, uh, writing up notes, you know, town or county histories, uh, creating gazetteers or other things that'll really help your, your research. Um, and you can usually find them in the in the early pages of each volume. Um, and uh, so we'll take a look at those. Um, as I mentioned, they're they're organized by county, so you'll find. Albany County religious records, you know, uh, Queens County religious records, and so forth. Uh, so you can search individually by county, but you can also search all our religious records uh, at once as well. So as I mentioned, you know, plenty of baptism, marriage, and burial records. Uh, this example that we're looking at here um, are some uh, marriages from uh, Oneida County and uh, from the 1860s. And you know, many of these volumes do go as early as the late 1700s and early 1800s. Uh, we also have a few volumes from the Dutch churches that go all the way back to the 1600s. Uh, so they are definitely uh, supplying information and records at times when there really is not much else to go on, uh, making them that much more important. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I you know, don't want to just sit here and look at baptisms, marriage, and, and burial records, um, you know, so I, I want to take a look at some of the more uh, interesting and unique parts of these volumes. Um, but definitely make no mistake, I mean, the, the, the meat of these records and these volumes, you know, are the baptism, marriage, and burials. Um, you know, they, they make up the bulk of all of these volumes and collections, uh, you know, but they're fairly straightforward. Uh, so I want to show you some of the kind of less obvious parts um, and highlight how useful they could be. Um, and, 
you know, each volume is a little bit different in this regard. Uh, you're not going to find the same chapter names in every one. You know, they're not always going to be writing about the same thing. So you really have to explore and, and see what, you know, the volume of interest to you has to offer. Um, you know, but there's always going to be something useful, uh, you know, in, in pretty much every case. Um, and I think, you know, what we're looking at here is one that I, you know, you know, especially kind of connect with, uh, because this is a, you know, this is a listing of uncommon and perhaps no longer used place names. Uh, and these were compiled by the editor of, of this volume, the archivist of the NYGNB. Um, his name is Royden Woodward Vosberg. Um, and so, you know, as, as he writes, if, if you read this, you know, if you read the details, um, he is not including any easy to identify place names, uh, but he's encountering, you know, uh, including ev all place names he's encountered that he thinks might give researchers trouble. Um, you know, so I, I think, you know, many of you have been in a situation where we've encountered a defunct place name that is, you know, surprisingly hard to figure out and, and sort of puzzle through. Um, so you can imagine something like this uh, is going to be really useful. And again, even if, if you don't have anyone in this volume, um, you know, it's still worth reading this, even, it, you know, if you have any ancestors anywhere near Albany at this time period, um, it, it's going to be really helpful. Uh, so definitely worth exploring uh, those early uh, introductory pages. Um, and, you know, here, here's an example from the same volume uh, a little bit earlier in the introduction, you know, we find some find some general historical remarks, um, you know, which are a little bit general, but again, these can provide all sorts of contextual clues that you might not expect. Um, and so let me highlight one thing here, uh, which is how they can lead to additional sources uh, that you may not have known about otherwise. Um, so we can see uh, the author here is talking about, um, you know, somebody, a uh, Burke and Myers journal, uh, which contains uh, more information about this congregation. Um, so, you know, assuming we have a family in this volume, or if we just want to know more about Lutherans in general from Albany, um, you know, maybe that's part of our, our family tree up there. Uh, you know, this is a source that, that we're going to want to find. Um, and, you know, it might seem like a total long shot, but the internet is a wonderful place. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, we can just you know, pop that name, some of those keywords into a search engine. Uh, and with very little work, you know, that leads me over to family search, uh, where I can find the listing, you know, of this exact journal. Um, and I believe this was even available as a digital book, which is amazing. Um, if not, it's easy to order or find. Uh, but again, just an example of, of how reading those introductions thoroughly can, can really give you some uh, exciting and interesting leads you may not have otherwise found. So, um, you know, last thing I want to point out about these is that there, um, you know, there are other records outside of baptisms, marriages, and burials. Uh, you know, we'll find a lot of useful things related to the congregation. Uh, here we can look at a list of members received, uh, and that's paired, you know, in the volume with a members dismissed uh, and, you know, from another church in Albany County. Um, you know, and these are really useful. That it, you know, it, it, it just is more, more records about these individuals. Um, but, you know, we can also get some really crucial uh, sort of migratory information uh, that may help us realize, you know, decide where else to look uh, for a particular family or individual. So uh, the next collection I want to talk about uh, was published on our website this past summer. Um, and this is actually the first time this, this information, this index has ever appeared online. Uh, the index, you know, this is called the New York Biographical Index, uh, and it was created by a former chief librarian uh, who was uh, chief librarian of the local history and genealogy division of the New York Public Library. Uh, his name was Gunther Poole. Uh, this is him pictured here. Um, and Mr. Poole was also a, a fellow of the NYGNB uh, and very involved with the society. And he, he basically spent uh, 50 years gathering biographical information from thousands of books and journals and periodicals and, you know, monographs that were previously not indexed, um, you know, for lack of a better word, they're sort of random, eclectic, and not very well known, uh, you know, journals or books or, or monographs. And, and I think that's why it makes it um, all that more special. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the titles in there, you'll find county histories, uh, town histories, um, 
histories of, of, of political parties, you know, uh, yearbooks for all sorts of uh, different um, civil civic societies, uh, and you know, trade journals, things like that. Uh, and the, the project originally began on just these little three by five index cards, uh, but now it's been you know, fully converted to a searchable database, uh, which you can find on our website. And you know, one of the best parts is that actually many of the books are so, they're, they're very old um, and they have fallen out of copyright. Uh, they're in the public domain you know, for one reason or another. Uh, and so you'll find them digitized on internet archive, Google books, you know, other websites. Um, so they're they're not always easy to find, uh, but but they are uh, actually you know many of them are nicely available, um, you know, and, and just to give a really quick example, um, right? This is the the entry in the index on our website. Um, we're looking at search result for uh, Frederick Fletcher found in the biographical index, um, you know, you'll see, you see for this one, the, you know, the middle name, uh, year, location, event type, those are blank. Uh, you know, they're, they're, those are sometimes filled in, sometimes not filled in. Um, but the really crucial information, right, the, the, the publication information at the bottom is what we're really looking for. Uh, and that's going to tell us, uh, you know, what publication this individual appeared in, um, you know, and, and give extra details about, you um, you know, how to locate that book. Uh, and then of course the reference that it actually came from, uh, just right to make things a little bit bigger here. I know that can appear small to some, uh, you know, here is is the name, right? Fletcher, Frederick Fletcher. <laughs> and uh, here is our publication title information. Um, you know, so really all, you know, and again, this, this won't work for all these entries, but you know, all I had to do here was copy, you know, the history of Putnam County, New York, uh, because that's there are probably a lot of books named that I, I also threw in the the author uh, you know the author's name, um, but I just put that in a search engine and you know sure enough, here is that exact volume on uh, Google Books, and then if we look you know again I use you know you can search the 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 volume you find if you want, uh, but the index did have the exact page that he was listed on. So I just navigated right over to that page. Uh, and then I can find him, Dr. Frederick Fletcher, um, you know, right here, uh, uh, you know, uh, blew it up. So it's a little bit easier to see, but it, you know, it was on that page right there. Um, and, you know, you can see that in this case, you know, it, it, it's really going to vary a lot. Sometimes you'll find, um, you know, paragraphs or even pages on someone. Uh, other times it, it's going to be a small snippet like this, um, you know, but but even just with something as small as this, I mean, if, you know, if you look at this, we can see a family relationship. Uh, we can see information about when and where he practiced medicine. Uh, and then we can see some, even some migration information and, and a lead on where he may have died. Uh, so actually, uh, that's a lot, um, you know, for just a few sentences. Uh, but again, every, every entry is going to be a little different. Uh, so it's definitely something worth exploring uh, on your own. Okay, so before hopping onto our website, uh, I do, and this is really tough to decide, you know, which records to talk about, um, but I, I do want to cover uh, one last kind of group of records. Um, and, you know, uh, and then we'll, I'll head over to our site and give you some pointers on accessing all this material, um, you know, but uh, you know, we, we discussed the record, right, which is the NYGNB's genealogy periodical, uh, and that covers all of New York State. Um, but we do have actually other quarterly periodicals on our website. Uh, and the four here uh, that you see listed were all created by the prolific genealogist and preservationist uh, Arthur Kelly. Uh, Mr. Kelly has been transcribing rare records from all over New York State for dec decades. Uh, we are very, very proud to have recently added some of his work uh, to our website, and those are the you know full, complete archives of these four journals. Um, so you'll find digital issues of all of these periodicals, uh, you know, and you know, uh, unlike the record, a little bit different than the record, these contain. Uh, transcriptions almost exclusively, you know, and that that's great. That means there are going to be a lot of names in there. Uh, you know, you won't find quite as many narrative articles. Um, but again, they're transcriptions of record that a discerning genealogist identified as valuable, um, you know, knowing New York State and knowing research in these counties. Uh, so they aren't just kind of random records. They're things that, you know, are worth taking the time to transcribe and disseminate to other genealogists. Um, so we'll just look really, really quickly at, at some, you know, uh, basic examples. But, um, you know, again, that just 
you know, head over and, and search for your ancestors in these collections. Um, but, you know, we're, we're looking at here, right? This is an early Albany uh, city directory uh, found from an issue of the Capitol. Uh, here we're looking at a tax assessment role from Columbia County, you know, again, 1836, that is a time uh, where there may not be all that much, uh, you know, available. Uh, so these are, you know, uh, especially useful. Um, and here uh, we have from the Saratoga, um, you know, some convictions beginning in the mid 1800s, um, you know, always kind of interesting to see the criminal records. Uh, but, you know, this is, is really just a, a really quick sample. Um, the, these periodicals have a really nice kind of diverse mix of eclectic, but really, really useful records. Um, so I highly recommend exploring them. You know, of course, they only pertain, you know, just going back, right? So, you know, they, they're really very focused on these specific counties. Um, you know, and of course, if you're not researching in any of these counties, they, they may not be so useful. Uh, but the good news is if, if you are, you know, they're hyper focused on this area. So they have a lot of really relevant material uh, for people interested in these areas. Okay, so I am going to head over to our website. Um, and I just want to check, uh, I'm going to take a look at the chat and maybe Noah, you can tell me, is it, can everyone see my screen, which now should be a web browser, uh, no longer uh, my presentation slides. Just want to make sure my Zoom screen share. Okay, yes, thank you, Maria. Okay, great, Anita, thanks. Okay, so um, I am over on our website, as I mentioned, you know, newyorkfamilyhistory.org uh, is our address. Uh, you know, again, just purely nygbs.org, nothing else uh, will also get you there. Uh, and we're looking at our homepage, um, which will look a little bit different every time you get there. Um, you know, but and you can see uh, if you would like to search our online records right from the homepage, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, this will query all of our records all at once. Um, you know, but uh, to navigate to our online records section, uh, it's right up top at the main menu. Um, and again, we'll just do a really quick tour of this. Uh, it's not complicated. It, it should look very familiar, you know, very similar to uh, your other favorite genealogy websites. Um, you know, but I, I think it's worth exploring a little bit. Um, so uh, within the online records section, you know, this is sort of our, our home page, uh, which allows you to search all records. Um, you know, we'll take a, a, a search in a second, but, you know, searching from this page queries absolutely everything we have all at once. Uh, if you would like to narrow your search down by category, uh, you can do that. So if you would like to only search our religious records, um, you know, you can sort of pre-filter this way. Uh, but if you scroll further down, um, you will see some links to popular areas within this section. You know, we know a lot of people come to our site to search the record uh, and only the record. Uh, so if you want to just head right over there right away, um, we have links through here. Um, but then you'll find other popular destinations that that um, you may be looking for. Uh, and you'll have, a, you know, a little background about um, our collections, as well as a list of, of everything that you can search. Um, so um, before I run an actual search, I do just want to show the collections catalog. Uh, so the, our collections catalog is essentially just a list of every single collection we have. Uh, as I mentioned, there are 93 of them, so there, there are a number. Um, you can find it from you know, this, this menu uh, on our homepage. But again, if you just go and, and you'll find this main menu anywhere on our site, if you just hover over the section, you can easily get to the collections catalog from anywhere. Uh, and you will find this list. Uh, it's automatically sorted in alphabetical order. Uh, it'll give you very brief descriptions of every collection we have, uh, and then allow you to go to the individual collection page to learn and search more about it. Uh, and so if you, um, you know, look on the left hand side, you're able to easily filter, you know, so if you want to look um, for again, if you just want to look at our religious records, um, you, know, you just check that box and you can filter the whole list um, uh, by that way and you can filter further by county uh, or, you know, by image type, um, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and so we will take um, a look at this page a little bit more in detail but you know, just to show you now, when you click on a collection page, uh, 
This will bring you to an area that gives you much more information about the collection and what records are in there. Uh, and you know, when you're on each collection page, you'll have another uh, way to search. But this time, this search is going to only query records from this collection. So it'll immediately cut out anything else that's in there. Um, you know, if you have a really specific research plan or research goal, or no, this is exactly what you want. You know, this is this is probably the way to do it. Um, you know, to to get to your desired results uh, most efficiently. Um, Again, we'll, we'll take a look at this in a, in a second um, in more detail, but then if you scroll on every page, you know, I recommend everybody scroll all the way to the bottom, you will get a, you know, definitive list of every single type of digital record we have in the collection. Um, and this is very carefully and intentionally done. Um, you know, it, it's something we noticed when looking at other genealogy websites is it can sometimes be a little bit of a mystery, you know, exactly what you're searching. Uh, and we know, you know, our, our researchers on our site are very careful and very deliberate. Uh, and so we want to make sure we let you know before you even run a search, if you want to know exactly what you're going to be searching through or looking at, you know, visit the collection page um, and, you know, you'll get a very good idea of the coverage, uh, you know, both in, in this case, if we're looking at religious records, you know, um, what types of congregations we have, but also what years are covered within those congregations uh, and things like that. So uh, let me just, I'll run a really quick search just again to show you what it's like. Um, you know, we'll do a very general name here. Um, and again, you know, first name, last name, uh, you can, you can, you know, we do have a little bit of a fuzzy search. It's, um, you know, uh, we use a phonetic matching algorithm. I won't, you know, unless somebody really wants, I, I won't get into too much detail on it. Um, but if you have ever heard of Soundex or are familiar with it, uh, we actually use a, a sort of a newer version of Soundex, which is the same idea. It's called Metaphone. But basically what that does is it converts your search term into a phonetic sound, and it will give you results that, you know, of course, it, it'll give you exact spelling results, you know, first, but it will also give you uh, results of names that sound similar to the name. So as a good example here, right, if we um, type in Smith, we'll get S-M-I-T-H, uh, but we will also get S-M-Y-T-H uh, because those make similar phonetic sounds. Uh, whereas if we were going just on exact spelling, you know, you might not see something like that. Um, so anyway, know that that when, when you are searching, unless you check exact spelling, you know, you're getting a little breadth in the search results um, and you can include additional keywords uh, or things like that if you'd like. Um, but the search is, is deliberately very simple. Um, you know, and when you click through, you'll see uh, this screen is your search results screen. Uh, you know, you'll notice your your terms are carried through. So if you want to make an update or change something, uh, you don't need to go back. You can just you know uh, do it from right there. Um, if you look, you know, in the center of the screen, obviously are the search results themselves. Uh, you will see the first name and last name of whatever query matched your search. You'll see the name of the collection it, it's in. And then uh, this column here is is inter an interesting thing we've done. Um, you know, our collections have, uh, they're, they're a wide variety. You know, when you accumulate material over a, the course of 150 years, it's not all gonna be exactly the same, you know, sort of from a data perspective. Uh, the indexes aren't going to always have the same fields. Uh, the information isn't always gonna be organized in the same way. So we have this flexible third column uh, that we call additional details. And this will uh, basically consolidates and compiles all of the other information found in that record. So as an example, and all you do is click, you know, click the cell to expand it. Um, but for, you know, this is a good example here, right? We have uh, a record from uh, the state, you know, census from 1855 for Ward 17. Uh, the additional fields for this search term will have things that censuses collect, you know, the location, the age of the person, uh, you know, their relation to the head of the family. And so, um, you know, we've sort of wrapped this all up uh, and we allow you to see it here. Uh, you know, as you go through your search results, but you'll notice um, if we go down to another record here, uh, we have a search result from the archive of the record. Um, obviously, this may or may not, this is not a census record, so we're not going to see the same type of information here. Uh, we're going to see things that are more relevant to the record. Uh, we're going to see the article title, 
you know, that um, the name appears in, uh, you know, for other things, for other parts of the record, right, we may see the event type or the event year, uh, depending on the entry. But again, this, this additional details column is just there to give you more information about the search result. Because ultimately, you know, what you're doing in the search results is, is you need to decide, okay, is it worth it for me to click to view this full image? Um, and so the more information we give you up front, the, the more you can decide, you know, we may, we may realize, you know, based on the age uh, and the birthplace of this person, you know, we are very interested in this James Smith. Uh, so what we do is we decide to go, you know, view the full image. When you click to view the image, you're going to open up to our image viewer, uh, which is just, you know, a, a very basic display of, uh, you know, the document that all this information came from. You know, this can be a little challenging. These are handwritten, um, you know, but uh, the, um, you know, you'll see contextual information on the left. And then up top, though it's small, uh, it does allow you to to do uh, many different things. Uh, you know, with the image, uh, for instance, we can zoom in uh, if if we want to get a closer look. Um, you know, and again, it's handwritten, so you know we'll we'll need to kind of scroll through uh, and take a close look. You know, you may even want to zoom in a little bit more. Um, you know, but you can also uh, you know go to a full screen view, uh, zoom in from there. Uh, you can see, you know, we have a print icon, or you can, of course, just download the file um, as as a PDF and, and look at it that way. Um, and I do want to show you one more result. Uh, so if we went, you know, if we wanted to look at, at our article from the record, uh, this is another example. This is what a record article will look like. Uh, you'll see at the very top of the image viewer, you'll get some information about, you know, whatever the document is. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the volume and issue, you know, of of this issue of the record. Uh, and you know, again, you can you can zoom in or out. You can print. You can download. You know, one thing that I really like about this, though, is is you know, with with a periodical, you'll often find yourself in the middle of an article. You know, when you get a search result, so obviously you may want to uh, navigate forwards or backwards uh, in the issue, um, and you can do so really easily using these arrows. Uh, and you know, we are intentionally only loading the image here, so it's it's very fast. You know, you can really page through these things, um, you know, very rapidly if you want to. Uh, you know, you can you can change the page number, so we can go. Uh, you know, to the first or second page. Um, and then one of my favorite things is, is it you can get totally lost in an issue. Uh, you know, you may forget where your search result actually landed you, um, but your browser, you know, our image viewer is always going to remember the first page you looked at. Uh, so you can just click to return to your original page uh, and we're going to go right back to where we landed. Um, uh, and so what, just a couple more things I want to show you, you know, uh, with some documents, uh, specifically periodical issues like the record, you know, we know some people don't want to have to page through single, you know, single pages, or if you want to download the whole issue, um, again, NYG and B members can always just click view full file. And now you're going to get a new image viewer, which will take a little longer to load because now we're loading a 52 page document, not just one single page, um, but it's still pretty fast, as you can see. Uh, and here now you can just scroll if you want uh, and you can download, you know, we can download the entire issue uh, if we want to save it. We could print it, too, if you want to, um, you know, but this is just an alternate way uh, that some people may prefer um, to look through these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then. Finally, last thing I'll point out about the record um, is if you want to hop around to another volume or another issue, uh, we've made it easy for you to do that right within the image viewer. Uh, the reason you may want to do this is a lot of articles in the record and other periodicals too were uh, serialized, you know, meaning they were published in uh, many, many installments over a long course of time. Uh, so you may find yourself in, uh, you know, landing on an article that you know, you go to the beginning of the article and it says, you know, this article was continued, you know, from volume 20, issue one, um, you know, 1890 or whatever it was. Uh, and so if you do find something like that and you want to sort of navigate back, you know, to a different issue, uh, you can do that really easily uh, through here and you can just click, um, you know, you can search by year or volume. Uh, you know, it's up to you. Um, you can click to go uh, navigate your way to that issue uh, to begin with. So uh, that 
is most of my demonstration. I do want to show one more thing um, before, you know, and, and I see we did get a number of questions, but if, if you have any others, or if you just want me to show you something, uh, whether it's how to do something or a particular record set, um, I am more than happy to do that. Uh, but just really quickly, uh, I want to go back to our um, collection page here as an example, the Albany County Religious Records. Uh, you know, I was talking about, uh, you know, the things in our religious records that go beyond just the names and dates. Uh, and I want to show you how to really easily access those. Uh, so, you know, as I showed before, we have very extensive descriptions of every single church volume in collections like these. Um, but these are, we also include what are called waypoint links. Uh, so you'll see, you know, these blue hyperlinks here will bring you directly to the beginning of a specific section of that volume. Uh, and so this is the best way to look, you know, for these religious records in particular, to look at, you know, what is going to be in this volume, you know, about Albany First Lutheran, you know, what can I learn? Uh, and here is exactly what we're looking at, right, that location of places. Um, so if you don't want to, you don't care about the names and dates or anything, you just want to look at that, um, it's really easy to get directly there, um, you know, from those waypoint links. Uh, so definitely any collection that piques your, your interest, um, the first thing I would do is browse that collection page uh, and sort of get an idea of what is available, because um, that, that can be really helpful. Um, so yeah, that, that I, I think I should wrap up um, my, you know, little demo here, uh, though, again, uh, you know, I, I I can start answering questions, but also happy, um, you know, as things come up to just show anyone anything uh, on the site as we go. Okay, so, okay, yeah, it looks like Noah's coming back on. Hey, Noah. Hey, how are you? Uh, so, Thanks. just want to thank you again for a, for a great informative presentation. I know a few people in the chat had something to say. Uh, along those lines. And we have a bunch of great questions already. Uh, to anybody else who is hoping to have a question answered, uh, please add it to the Q&A section below and we'll do our best to get to it. Uh, so with that, uh, might as well just get uh, underway with these questions. So uh, to start it off, uh, we have a question from Tim who said his third great grandfather arrived in the US in 1858 settled in Great Neck, Long, uh, Long Island area, and was available back for the Civil War. Uh, his family lore has it that he purchased a plot of land uh, with the substitute money uh, from the war uh, in what was then Queens, and was eventually killed in uh, 1864. He is hoping to track down that land transaction, uh, and he's been researching like the Queens Library and, and stuff like that. Do you have any guidance or, or anything that could help? Yeah, sure, definitely. I mean, that, that, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I will definitely uh, preface my answer by saying I am not a professional genealogist. You know, I, I am, you know, definitely well versed in research and, and it's certainly a big hobby of mine. But, um, you know, probably somebody like Sue or Josh or one of our genealogists could, could answer this much more definitively. Um, but my, I, my advice is, you know, they, you know, they're, is a complication, right? I mean, we we have land records available throughout New York State, uh, and those are largely available on Family Search right now. Um, they exist at the moment as an image-only collection. Uh, where actually, the NYGNB and other volunteers are are actively indexing all of these records and making some really amazing progress. So, just generally, as far as land records go, uh, we should have some really exciting searchable databases coming up very soon. Uh, the unfortunate thing about that, and and I am not, I, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Um, I actually believe there's a complication with Queen, with Queens uh, as a part of that collection, um, and I know, you know, the the main thing that popped into my head is just that Queens land records are unfortunately a little bit different than the rest of New York State as far as the availability of them goes. Um, you know, I and and uh, this is where, you know, uh, you know, one of our genealogists would would probably provide a more solid answer, uh, maybe even somebody in the chat. Um, you know, but but I'm not quite sure if the Queens ones have been digitized. I but I will say just overall, um, you know, this kind of question, uh, you know, that that's, you know, specific to, to your research and would really benefit from 
you know, a professional opinion um, is a great op you know, a great thing to potentially bring to a consultation. Um, you know, we do offer consultations with uh, some of our staff genealogists uh, that, you know, people really love and are really helpful. Um, you know, they're, they're not extensive, uh, you know, they're only for 30 minutes, but but this is the kind of thing that, that you could, you know, um, you know, I'd recommend asking someone in a consultation, uh, you know, especially one of our folks. Uh, and that's the kind of thing where you could come out with a really solid plan of, of what to investigate. Um, but yeah, that is off the top of my head that that's all I know. And sorry, it's not super sufficient, but, um, but yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, next up is from Katie. Uh, she's wondering, are these databases available to the general public or members only? Uh, can you elaborate on on who can access what? Yeah, sure. No, that that's a great question. Um, and so, you know, the 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 overarching thing is again the search. Anyone can search. You know, anyone can view the search results. Uh, if there's information in the search results, that's totally open to anybody. Um, and including things like our indexes, right? Like the pool biographical index. You know, that's just an index. There's no image associated with that, uh, so that's open and anyone can can access it. Uh, you know, but again, the the actual image files uh, are you know only viewable by by members of the NYGNB, uh, and you know those that comes with the ability to you know to to print and download and do all that stuff. Um, you know, and and I will say that there are some exceptions. We do have a we do have some collections that are are free, but you just have to sign up for an account on our website and log in. Uh, and if you go to, if you're running a search, you'll notice in the search filter, I can actually show it um, probably pretty quickly. Let me see. Um, you can just, you'll find a filter on the side of the search that says show free records only. Uh, and you'll, you know, uh, just hit that to filter and you'll, you'll, you know, find things like, you know, and these are things that are, again, in the public domain, uh, you know, the New York State Death Index, things like that. Um, you know, you don't have to uh, be sort of a full member to, to view those. Um, but we do just ask that you log in because we, we don't want people anonymously looking or downloading at tons of files from our website, and that sort of thing. So. So next question from Cindy is pretty similar to one we've had uh, just for searching for information, but they're looking for uh, their great, great grandfather who was born in uh, Tonawanda in 1818 mm -hmm. and is just hoping to find some information. Yeah, no, that, you know, that, I mean, that is a tough one. And, and that's, you know, exactly the type of question we see all the time and, and a little bit, you know, sort of what I was getting at with those, that early 1800s, late 1700s, um, you know, New York State challenge. Uh, and, you know, I certainly can't recommend anything specific off the top of my head, but I, I would say sort of strategy wise, um, you know, uh, find find the count, you know, and I, I'm not totally familiar with that uh, location and what county it might be in, um, you know, but but take a look, you know, start with the county, start with the town. Uh, I would head over to our record article title index, which will also allow you to look at articles by location, uh, you know, and, and just see what we have there. Maybe we have something about that town or about that county that could be useful. Um, you know, another recommendation would be to look for county histories of that county. Uh, we actually have a, a growing collection of county histories on our website. But when you look, you know, and, and county histories, I, I could talk for a long time about these documents, but they were basically these 500, 600 page, you know, huge volumes that were produced in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And they are exhaustive histories of, you know, really any county in New York State. Uh, and they're really wonderful for researchers because Again, they're in the public domain, they're easily available online, um, but they went into a, 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 an impressive level of detail about the people and the towns and in those counties um, to the point where to, to a normal person trying to find information, they're very boring and sort of esoteric, but, but ge for genealogists, we love them. Uh, you know, and, and, and so you can look in there and, and what that'll do for you, you know, you may find a name or a date or something like that. What that'll do for you is it'll give you some leads, you know, 
just by looking at, say, you know, the history of religious congregations in that county, you know, you'll be able to see, okay, uh, here were the churches that were around at the time my ancestor was born, you know, so then, you know, to maybe look for some of those churches, maybe some of those are online, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so again, general advice, but I think, you know, those, the, that's probably what I would do if, if I was in that situation. Right, so next up, we have two more questions from Katie. Uh, so the first is, are the various periodicals that, that YGMB uh, has, uh, are they available in Percy? Ah, okay, great question. Yeah, Percy is great. Uh, so for, for those of you who don't know about Percy, that it is uh, a, a, you know, a collection, a genealogical collection, uh, that's an acronym for Periodical Source Index. Uh, and that is a great and one of the underutilized, you know, uh, things that researchers can take advantage of. Um, and so what that is, is it's just a, a huge index to genealogy periodicals uh, and local history periodicals, because, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the record is kind of a bigger one that's been around for a long period of time. But there are tons of these smaller journals uh, that have accumulated amazing amounts of information, uh, and they're hard to access. There's not you know, there's not one, well, before Percy, there was not one place you could go to sort of get a, a broad look at a whole bunch of periodicals. Um, but if you search the periodical source index, you can learn a lot about the different articles and different types of journals there are, uh, you know, and, and, and so to answer uh, the specific question, yes, you know, the, the record uh, is definitely in the periodical source index. You know, I actually am not 100% sure about the other, the Arthur Kelly periodicals, though I would bet that they probably are just because Percy is so extensive. Um, but uh, for those of you who are interested in accessing Percy and learning more about it, it is not something we have on the NYGNB's website, uh, but we, there is, you know, Percy right now lives at findmypast.com. Uh, and this is actually, you know, I haven't talked about this yet, but NYGNB members do get, you know, uh, free complimentary access to all of Find My Pass uh, North American records, uh, which is kind of a perk of NYGNB membership. Uh, and Percy is included in uh, those records. So if you're an NYGNB member, you have free access to Percy. Uh, and I can see about putting a link in the chat. Um, it's not something I anticipated including in the, in the syllabus. Um, you know, but if you just search Google Percy uh, and you'll get to the page uh, and it's definitely something worth exploring. Um, they're also starting to add, it's mostly an index. They're starting to add uh, images of, of articles and things like that, um, which is, is really exciting. But, um, but yeah, Percy is one to, to have in your toolkit uh, for sure. The other question Katie had was just uh, in reference to what the collections have specifically for veterans of the Civil War. Okay, yeah. Um, so that, yeah, again, you know, uh, that actually, I'm glad you asked that. We have, um, and I'm sorry, I'm no, am I still sharing my screen? I, I think I am, right? Um, yeah, you are. Okay, thank you. Just want to make sure. Uh, so we, we don't have a ton of military records, to be totally honest. I, again, search the record because the record certainly has things on veterans from you know all of the military conflicts uh but as far as dedicated uh veteran collections we we do have just one but it's pretty extensive uh and this is the um the nationwide grave index uh and i'm just trying to remember actually if i filter by well it's really a death record well let me see um Oh, I think we call it veterans. So it, I believe the title is called Veterans Buried in New York. Uh, yes, here we go. Um, again, this is an example of an index uh, that is open to everybody. You know, you don't have to be an NYGMB member to use it. Um, but uh, the this is an index to uh, just what it says, but, you know, military veterans who are buried in the state of New York. Uh, and this was compiled, um, you know, from uh, the uh, nation nationwide gravesite locator, as you can see here. Uh, and this will give you, you know, we can just take a really quick look. Uh, and again, not not necessarily sure that, that your specific ancestor would be in here, um, but it's worth looking up. Uh, there is, you know, a lot of information. Uh, it, it's a extensive index. It's not just about 
you know, and with a name and a date, uh, you can see here as the example, um, you know, you can find burial information for this veteran, uh, but, you know, we can see a lot more about their, their birth date, their death date, um, you know, they, and, and you can even have relationships to, you know, to other people. You will find people who are buried, you know, sort of with or next to uh, veterans in here as well. Um, so, sorry, long answer, but th that's one worth um, exploring for sure that I didn't have time to cover, uh, but is, is again, a, a very useful one that we have. So we just got a couple questions and just now related to Percy. So I'll just sure. get to those since yeah. you brought mm -hmm. it up recently. Uh, so Katie first wanted to say that Percy has been rehoused this year at the Allen County Public Library. Uh, so do you know anything about that? I actually, I do not. <laughs> and sometimes I, I learn things on here. So yeah, I'm not sure about that, but, but it, that is worth mentioning, um, you know, and, and definitely, uh, you know, the Allen County Public Library is, is a, you know, a major genealogical library in Allen County, Indiana. Uh, and they are, they're awesome, uh, but they are the leaders of Percy and they are the ones who create the actual index. Uh, they also digitize a ton of material in their basement. It's really cool. Uh, but yeah, they, they're, they're sort of the, the authors of Percy. Uh, and so definitely uh, if, if what I said is out of date, you know, forgive me, but um, you you know, if, if it's over at the Allen County Public Library website, you know, that is, um, you know, that's really good because they are a fantastic institution as well. So, um, yeah, sorry about that if that was an error. And the other question I was going to get to was about getting to Percy on Find My Past, uh, but it's still relevant enough uh, if Percy isn't there. Uh, but Lynn wants to know, how do you sign in uh, to Find My Past from uh, using your MYGMB account. Okay, yeah, that that's a great question. Um, and and yeah, basically, uh, you know, for those if you know when you join as an NYGNB member, you know, we will send you an email a couple days after you join with instructions because about how to access your free you know find my past account. Uh, and essentially, what you have to do is you do need to create an account on FindMyPast.com. Uh, and that account is not related to your NYGNB account at all. It's, you know, it's your own, you can have a different password, different email, whatever. Uh, but what you have to do is you just have to link those two accounts together. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I can show you really, really quickly. It's, it's, we've made it very easy. The process has, has evolved over the years. Um, but if you just go to NY, our, you know, our website slash find my past and hit enter. Uh, this is all you need to know. Um, you know, you are going to have uh, the instructions, you know, you basically there, it'll load in a second. Uh, my connection is a little bit slow. Uh, there's a blue button that loads here. Um, you know, if I open up, probably another browser would do it. Um, there is a, a blue button that loads here, um, you know, and uh, you basically just have to click through uh, and sign into your Find My Past account. There it is. Um, I'll have to take a look at what's going on in Firefox uh, with our developers. But yeah, um, if you go in Chrome, you can just click here to begin your activation. Uh, and all you have to do is you, you sign into your NYGNB account to sort of verify. Uh, and then it sends you over to find my past and you can either sign in or create an account. Um, but basically you do that once and then all you have to do is go over to find my past and sign in. And they'll have, I, you know, you'll basically have a free subscription on your site, um, you know, that, that should renew in, in a year with your membership so yeah that's a good question though definitely all right so next uh next up is from ann who is wondering if there are any collections available uh with information on colonial era commercial ships and ship captains oh okay that is a good one you know uh yeah and actually leads me perfectly into our newest online collection, uh, which we just put on last week, uh, is Colonial Immigration Records. Uh, and so let's, we can take a look at that in our collections catalog. Yeah, and so this um, is, again, we just put this on last week. Uh, I, I should warn, this is there is nothing that is absolutely brand new in here. Uh, you know, we haven't uncovered a trove of 
passenger list from the 1600s, unfortunately. Um, but what this is, is, is this is a large collection of colonial immigration records that have been produced throughout history. Uh, and these are, you know, everything we could find that is sort of a notable source that we would want to point a researcher to. Uh, and if we are allowed to, based on the rights, We've taken it and we've put it on our website. Um, so you know, I you know, I, I can't necessarily speak specifically to commercial ship captains, uh, though there are passenger lists in here, which obviously have a lot of information on on you know uh, all aspects of the voyage. Uh, but anyone interested in colonial records, colonial immigration, you know, head over to this page and, and look at it. You can see we have uh, sort of rounded up a list of articles from the record that we have uh, with transcriptions. But if you go further down, you'll, you know, you'll find um, some compiled things that were compiled by other researchers, other genealogists, you know, Scandinavian immigrants. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of Dutch immigrants. So th this covers both British and colonial periods. Um, you know, and I won't go through every single one of these, but again, this is, um, you know, very useful. And one of the things that we do with these collections, you know, again, you can find this stuff on Internet Archive, you know, you can find it digitized in various places. Um, but what we have done with this collection is we've sort of carefully curated it. So anything that we know is, a, you know, that we're aware is a very bad source we haven't included. Uh, and one of the, the good things about this is you can now search all of these documents all at once. Uh, you know, if you go to archive.org, you can look at each, any one of these volumes potentially individually, um, but you can't query them all at once. Uh, so this is a good kind of, um, you know, compilation of those type of records. Uh, and uh, we're looking to do more of this in the future. So um, you know, definitely take a look at this uh, if you're interested. All right, next up is a question from Rosemary. Uh, so they just tried going to the collections catalog. Uh, they clicked on the location filter of New York City and only saw two results. Uh, is this possible or did they do something wrong? Uh, no, you did not do anything wrong. And we do have more than two collections in New York City. Um, but, and, and I will explain this now, it's a little bit challenging. Um, you know, if you can imagine trying to catalog a collection by location, uh, you run into a lot of really tricky issues uh, because we have a lot of collections, for instance, the record, you know, we have our digital archive of the record uh, and that, you know, certainly contains information on every single New York County. Um, but, you know, for purposes of, of sort of our user experience on the front end and how we manage data on the back end, you know, it wouldn't necessarily make sense to tag our, our, our archive of the record with 62 individual counties for, for all of New York State. Um, so what I'm leading to is if you are going to filter by location, you know, you can definitely filter by county. Uh, and what you're going to do if you, you know what you're going to see if we filter, for instance, by Albany County, um, you can see this long list of counties, right? Um, you know, we're going to find collections that are only absolutely only about Albany County and, and not involving any other counties. Um, you know, but obviously this doesn't include something like the record, which has a lot of material on uh, Albany County. So we have created, you know, you'll find things tagged by county with one additional larger, broader tag called all New York counties. Uh, and this is just our solution to this, you know, kind of challenging problem. Um, but again, so for, for looking for a New York city, you know, if you search, you know, check this box that says all New York counties, now you're gonna see a whole list of collections that span basically the whole state of New York, including New York City. Um, you know, so you can see there's, you know, there's more, you know, there's a lot more in here uh, than just there, um, you know, but again, you know, location is a little challenging to tag things. Uh, and, you know, again, you know, specific to New York City, you know, remember that New York County is Manhattan, you know, Kings County is Brooklyn, um, you know, Bronx is obviously its, its own location as well. Um, so, you know, tagging and, you know, organizing by location is a little challenging. Um, but I think it's good to know about that all New York counties, uh, if, if you're going to try to filter that way. Yeah, that just leads into a different question uh, from Claire, who is asking our Brooklyn records under New York uh, County from 1860 to 1900. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, and, you know, where that comes from is, is you know, 
for if anyone is unfamiliar with you know geographics history of New York City, you know the uh, for, you know when you see New York City, you know essentially prior to eight, the year eighteen ninety eight, New York City often refers to Manhattan and and only Manhattan, you know potentially some parts of the Bronx, but um, you know really. Uh, New York City for, you know, mo uh, until 1900, 1898 is, um, you know, New York County. And, and up until, you know, 1898, you know, Queens, Brooklyn, Richmond, which is Staten Island, and, and the Bronx, well, the Bronx is part of Westchester County, um, you know, but, but basically Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island were their own different entities, um, you know, their own distinct cities in the case of, of Brooklyn or counties, you know, uh, and so, that is a tricky question, right? When we talk about New York City, are we talking about everything that encompasses present day New York City? Or are we talking about New York City at the time of the record, you know, that we're looking at? And in short, our, our answer is the latter, uh, that we try to classify things according to the county, the county that the records were about at the time the records were made. So, you know, to answer that specific question, um, you know, you are going to find, um, you know, records for Kings County, you know, prior to 1898, you know, you are not going to find Brooklyn records in a New York County collection, uh, a New York City collection, you know, you, I would go, you know, you go to, to Kings County for that. Um, and again, we, we, we always try to keep things, keep things for by the county, which kind of helps with that New York City issue, um, because really, you know, uh, forever, Kings County is has always has been Kings County, you know, regardless of its affiliation with New York City, um, you know. So when we're all of our Brooklyn records are going to be Kings County, um, you know, no matter what, uh, which helps us navigate that a little bit, but it, it still can be a little confusing, especially because in New York State there are all sorts of county boundary boundary changes and evolutions and things like that. Um, it can be challenging uh, to keep track of. And uh, while we're on the topic of uh, the county indexes. Uh, can you say a little more about like record about the record county index and how to use it? Like what's, what's your yeah. best tips on, on how to. Sure. Yeah. That? So um, that uh, what I was referring to is our, it's called our article title and location index. Uh, and this is a project we completed um, uh, pretty recently, actually a couple summers ago, we had a really great team of volunteers and interns, you know, actually create this index. Uh, and it's been very useful and sorry, I'm just trying to navigate over. So if you go to the record page, uh, you will find all of our extra indexes uh, you know, below the search box. Um, so, you know, there are probably five or six at this point, um, but what we're talking about here is the record article and location index. Uh, and this is, you know, you're not gonna, when you search for names and dates, it's not searching this index. This is a, a separate entity. Uh, and, you know, the, the intention is to browse, you know, articles in the record, because oftentimes the article title is very descriptive of what is in the article. Uh, and if you're, trying to, if you have to search by just a name or a date, you're not going to be able to see all of the articles that might be relevant to your research. So here we're just looking at every single article that's ever been written in the record. Uh, and, you know, you can search. Um, so again, if, if we were looking for some, you know, if we're just interested in, in researching an ancestor in the Civil War, you know, we can't find their name in the record, but we want to see, you know, um, what articles are there in the record that relate to the Civil War? Um, you know, we can just run this search and we can see, you know, everything here uh, and and if it may be useful. Um, now, uh, the second piece of this is that location is a factor here as well. Uh, so what you can do, you know, you can see here, you know, in the list of results, we have the article title, you know, where it appears in the record, but then we have a listing of article locations, uh, and these are, you know, basically the most prominent counties and locations, you know, involved in that article. So it, you know, 
some record articles span multiple generations, multiple centuries, you know, so we're not going to be listing every single county that is mentioned, you know, even a little bit in that article, because there would be quite a lot. Um, but what we instructed our volunteers to do is, you know, find the top two or three counties that are featured in this article, uh, and, and then, you know, tag that article with that county. Um, so, you know, what that does is it, it and, and by the way, so when we go by you know, location for this, uh, record articles can be written about anything anywhere. So, you know, we'll talk, we'll, we classify things by New York County, um, but if there's another state in the union, you know, we'll list that in, in, in the location term as well, uh, or even another country. You can see we have Belgium, Bermuda here, uh, also Alabama, you know, with some New York counties, um, you know, but this is really useful. Again, if you're, if you can't necessarily find your Albany County family in the record, you know, you still want to see what was written about Albany County because there could be something really useful for you. So again, you can just filter this by uh, article location and you're going to see a list of, you know, every article written in the record that that really prominently featured Albany County. Um, and you can see there's, you know, there's quite a few here. Uh, but as someone researching in Albany County, you know, you probably want to scroll through this list and see if any of these articles jump out, um, you know, as as being useful to you, you know, read them, look at the citations, look at the methods, um, you know, that can be really useful. And, and again, all you have to do is, you know, uh, click the link here, and then and you'll go right to the beginning of that article. Um, you know, so uh, this is, I think, a really good kind of new way to explore the record without being tied to a particular name or date or anything like that. All right, so we just have three questions left. I know we're running a little long tonight, but uh, I'd, I'd love to get all of these answered if possible. Yeah, uh, no, that's so, fine with me. Thanks for everyone for sticking around yeah. if you're still here. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so Tim has, uh, has a brick wall that he's encountered in his research, and that's trying to find when the marriage of his third great uncle and, uh, and his wife took place. He has like a some varied information, uh, like when his great uncle arrived in the U.S. Uh, doesn't really have when his great uncle's wife arrived, uh, but he does know stuff like that they were in the process of changing religions from Protest, uh, Protestant to Catholic, uh, as they all ended up being Catholic. Uh, so, do you know how he would best uh, start finding the information that he's looking for? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. Uh, and I, I see that here and I'm reading it and forgive me if I'm not following, but if, you know, basically if it's, if it's, if it's suspected to be a Catholic marriage, uh, you know, the answer there is actually find my past. Um, and for those of you who, who don't know, who, who do have Catholic ancestors, uh, the Catholic church records have been a little bit difficult to, well, they've been impossible for researchers to really obtain access to for a very, very long time. Uh, and the Catholic Church keeps amazing, extensive, you know, sacramental registers, which which are really good for genealogists. Uh, and up until recently, they've, they've been kind of impossible to get to. Um, but thankfully, Find My Past has been working with, uh, our, you know, they've actually been working with a number of archdioceses from all over the country. Um, but specific to New York, they've been working with the Archdiocese of New York uh, to digitize and index, you know, sacramental registers uh, from that archdiocese, which covers, you know, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but, it, you know, New York County, Richmond, Westchester, I think a couple other places. Um, but those are coming online now. It's called the Catholic Heritage Archive. Uh, you know, there, there are marriages in there. They're searchable. You can view the images. Um, you know, so, so again, any, any Catholic records in New York, if they were in the, the lower part of the state, uh, definitely head over uh, to find my past. Um, and again, something you get access to for free as an NYGNB member. Um, and then just, again, it, now if, the, if it's a, you know, Protestant, uh, records are, are a little more difficult to find. Well, not necessarily more difficult, but they're different to find because there's not going to be, in most cases, a, a large overarching kind of apparatus. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, speaking generally, Protestant, you know, congregations tend to be a little more independent. So they may have their own 
you know, processes for capturing their records. But, you know, with, with anything Protestant, the question is to figure out, you know, uh, what were the churches in existence around the time of the event in my ancestor's local area, and then begin, you know, by looking there potentially, uh, though that's not always, you know, going to get you the, the right result. But um, that's, you know, that's what I recommend there. Great. Uh, next up is from Matthew. Uh, he wants to know if you have a guess or estimation of what percentage of death records for New York City uh, have been indexed and were they mandatory after 1900? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, you know, they, you know, gosh, the, the, and, and so I, I should point everybody on our website, you know, we have a guide to New York vital records because it's very complicated. You know, there are different availabilities for New York State, you know, New York City is its own entity. I, you know, but to answer this question, just off the top of my head, uh, New York City tends to be much better than the rest of the state as far as creating vital certificates or, or recording vital events in city ledgers or things like that. Um, you know, so the short answer is, you know, uh, certainly the percentage of death records that have been indexed, um, you know, uh, if the death records, you know, the, the vast majority have been in short. Um, there are some really good indexes on ancestry. Uh, there are some really good ones from the Italian uh, Genealogical Society, German Genealogy Society, um, you know, a number of others, you know, that are searchable. And just as far as New York City, 1900s death certificates are, your th that's a pretty good chance that that exists. Um, off the top of my head, New York City started really enforcing the creation of death certificates, you know, well before that in the 1800s. Um, so, you know, for elsewhere in New York State, you might not necessarily find one, uh, though it's it's pretty likely after 1900. Um, but in general, I'd say for New York City, that's it's probably a pretty good chance that it, it's there. Um, but again, for specifics, go to our vital records guide. Uh, that'll help you find exactly what level and what time period, you know, you need to know. Right, and for the last question we have, uh, Catherine wants to know if there's any function uh, on the website that will help create a list of found articles or resources that people can return to later without having to research and relocate. That, that's an excellent idea. Um, you know, the answer, unfortunately, is no. There's there's not anything like that right now. Um, you know, but that is a really good idea. Uh, and you know, actually, maybe a good thing to end with is that we, you know, I just I really can't tell you how much I like hearing feedback about the site, about our online records, whether it's good or bad. I mean, believe it or not, even the bad things at least give us something to fix or improve, which is always good. Um, you know, but if you have ideas for things you want us to do, uh, features you want to add just like that, I mean, I, I can tell you, I'll, I'll write that one down and we'll start looking at it. Um, you know, we really like to hear from our members and our users. Uh, and if you look, actually, I will show you very quickly. Um, if you are looking at any image on our website, uh, you'll notice in the lower right hand corner, we have this provide feedback link. Um, this is a really good way I get emails anytime you fill this out, this goes right to my email. Uh, so, you know, um, be kind, but uh, it, it's good to know, you know, anything if, if you're running into an error, if you just have an idea about something you want, this is a great way to submit it. Um, you know, and, and even if there's a problem with an image, this will tell me what page you filled this out from so I can go check out that image itself. Um, but yeah, I think that is, that looks like it's, uh, that looks like it's everything. So, um, you know, th thank you everybody again. I, I, I didn't at the conclusion of my, you know, demo, thank everyone, but, uh, you know, really appreciate your attention uh, and the time and, and hope you go out and explore, uh, you know, our site. And, and again, let me know, you know, uh, via email, uh, online forums. I, you know, I love to hear from everybody, uh, you know, so, so yeah, thank you and uh, uh, good luck with all your research and uh, have a great evening. Yeah, and I want to thank you again for giving this great presentation. I know we have a handful of of these kinds of webinars each year, uh, but it's always great really diving into what our records provide and, and what you can find on the website. So thanks everybody for joining us tonight. It's great having so many people in, in the chat as always. Uh, as Sue mentioned at the start of 
the webinar. We do have plenty of events ongoing, upcoming that you should check out on our website, including plenty of webinars, uh, our New York Family History School offerings, and there's just so much to see, uh, as well as all the information Fred went over for your personal research. So thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you for our next event. All right. Good night, Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.